Hello, this is Jonas from VHDLWiz. In this video, I want to talk about my new course, which is about making a functional coverage driven randomized test bench using the UVVM VHDL verification framework. Usually, when creating test benches for a VHDL module, we write test cases to trigger certain behaviors in the device on the test. We design each test case to check particular aspects of the module's functionality. This method is called directed testing because we directly target specific behaviors or corner cases in the device on the test. But there are other ways to write test benches. Constrained random verification is another method that relies on letting the test bench randomly interact with the device on the test. Then, based on specific constraints or limits, the test bench decides which stimuli to use and when to stop. Randomized test benches can be very effective at discovering bugs, especially corner cases that you may not have thought of. But if the test bench behaves randomly, how can we ensure that it tests key functionality? We need a way to measure test coverage as the simulation runs. That's where functional coverage comes into play. First, we examine the device on the test to identify what we really want to test. Then we write test bench code to monitor whether these events happen. Examples of such could be hitting all the states in the finite state machine, hitting all possible state transitions, or testing different permutations of input values. We call these functional coverage points. And within the coverage points, we define coverage bins. If a coverage point is a state machine, its coverage bins may include every possible state and transitions between them. Things we would like to test about the state machine. Finally, after the test bench has collected coverage data for a while and all bins have been hit, we design it so that it stops and prints a summary. That's what you will learn in the new course because we'll create such a test bench for a module that I've picked from the VHDLWIS library. I can tell you now that we will discover a corner case bug in my module that I wasn't aware of, even though I have already created a test bench for it and have been using it for a long time. You will learn all of that and more in the course that I'm releasing in the VHDLWIS membership portal today. If you would like to have this course, you can find a link to the sales page in the video description below this video. Finally, after finishing talking now, I'll add preview clips from a few selected lessons so that you can get a feel for how I teach. Thank you for watching and keep coding. Then in the end, we will stop the test bench by using the finish line, but we may have to include a wait statement just to satisfy the requirement from VHDL that there has to be a wait statement in every process, even though it won't be reached. So we interact with the UVVM verification components through procedure calls that are defined in their packages. And then we specify this signal, which identifies that verification component type. And then we give the ID of that specific instance. If we have more than one, we have to change this one, but usually it's just one. And we are going to do the same for the UART. So here we're calling UART transmit, which is a procedure that's described in the quick reference PDF that I showed you on the web page. We have to specify this, which isn't a constant, but a signal that's defined in one of the UVVM framework packages. And then the instance number one, because we only have one. And this verification component has two channels, TX and RX. Right now we want to transmit, so we have to specify TX. And this is the byte, the byte value, something like this. But we have defined read request in the constants package here. So we're going to send a read request and see if the device on the test responds to that, because that's the easiest way to get it to respond. Anytime the device on the test sees this read request byte, which isn't escaped like here, it's going to sample the in and out regis signals and transmit them out of the FPJ. Then we're going to add bins for the different states. And this state machine has only three states. 
we can add the bins like this on the covrx shared variable we call add bins and then the bin function call and inside of here we have to give an integer as the argument and to convert any state to an integer representation we can call on the state type the pos attribute and this is a built-in vhdl attribute that will return the index of enumerated type so this will be 0 1 and 2 that satisfies the requirement to only use integers in coverage bins but we can identify them with string labels as well and that will make it easier to understand what we're looking at when we print out the coverage bins after the simulation has completed so one bin for each of the states but we also want to add bins for the transitions between the states we have to record the transitions and that's these vertices these arrows we have to create one bin transition for each of them